Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some information coming out from Ukraine to share with you. We've got a report here that apparently the New York Times has stated that Ukraine is developing a plan to end the war through negotiations. So this is the war with Russia. And we've been hearing a lot about this lately. And the New York Times is coming out and stating this. So I tried to research this because I found it on X, actually, this information. And I could not find a New York Times article actually talking about this, but we found multiple uh, smaller publications discussing this topic and stating that, yes, the New York Times did make this statement. So, yeah, they are saying that, uh, that the Kiev government is planning to end hostilities through peaceful negotiations with Russia. So this is a very big development right now. This is something being widely talked about. We know that Volodymyr Zelensky has also invited Russia to the next peace summit. I think they might be holding it maybe in, in November. And uh, this is also right after the uh, presidential elections, okay? And if Donald Trump gets elected as well, this war is going to come to a close anyway because we already know that he's come out publicly stating that he would end this conflict as president-elect um, and that this war should have never started. So that's obviously a big development but uh, regarding Ukraine and Russia here, we know that, um, you know that Ukraine is trying to push Russia to join these negotiations and uh, join the next peace summit. But uh, last I heard that Russia doesn't really want to be involved in this. They were telling Ukraine to like come to the negotiating table themselves and be serious about ending the war, that they weren't really being serious about wanting to end it. So we'll have to see how that goes. So we'll go over this report here in just a moment. Uh, but also real quick, we're going to go over as well um, some some posts on X to share some additional information with you regarding this war. I've got some other developments that are happening from the Ukraine side and the Russian side. And then also we're going to talk about J.D. Vance. If you don't know who that is, that is uh, Donald Trump's vice president pick that he uh, just selected in the last couple days. And we're going to talk about him as well because he's been coming out in multiple news interviews recently talking about how the United States needs to start going after Iran and start bombing them. And uh, it makes me wonder if maybe that's the plan here is to kind of wind down this operation in Ukraine and this war over here. So that way the United States can focus on Iran, because obviously Iran is uh, is working on nuclear weapons right now. They could already have them. The United States come out many times said that they would not allow uh, Iran to receive nuclear weapons. And then we also have these developments happening between Israel and uh, Hezbollah and Hamas right now. And that all kinds of that kind of ties into Iran as well. So we'll kind of just discuss that briefly here in just a moment. But first, I want to go over this with you, this report on top war. It says the New York Times, Kiev is developing a plan to end the conflict through peace talks. This came out just in the last 24 hours. It says here, Kiev plans to end hostilities through peaceful negotiations with Russia. The country's authorities are already developing a plan that will stop the conflict. This statement was made by the New York Times. The American publication decided to portray Zelensky as almost a peacemaker for his words that Russia should also be present at the second peace summit. According to the newspaper, Kiev is developing a plan that should put an end to this conflict, but Americans forget to add that Kiev's plan provides for the defeat of Russia and peace on Ukraine's terms, and everything that Russia offers is a priori uh, considered unacceptable. As the military conflict continues for two and a half years, Ukraine is developing a plan to end the hostilities through negotiations. So this is apparently what the New York Times wrote, and I'll read that again. As the military conflict continues for two and a half years, Ukraine is developing a plan to end the hostilities through negotiations. So apparently, yeah, that's what they're doing. They are developing a plan right now to, to negotiate with Russia, um, and this is obviously after two and a half years of war with them. So it says right here as well, let us express the opinion that the same publication will soon publish another article in which it will accuse Russia of unwillingness to conclude peace agreements because Moscow will reject Kiev's proposal, along with Zelensky's peace formula. The Russian foreign ministry has already stated that it does not plan to take part in events organized by Ukraine. So that's what I was telling you guys earlier. Uh, since nothing good will come of them, <coughs> excuse me, these are yet another Western gathering. With the help of the United States and its allies, want to force Russia to accept their terms. So what is called peace, peace uh, initiatives, excuse me, of Ukraine in the United States is not such uh, not such for Russia. Okay, so that's kind of what Russia is saying is that uh, these gatherings are just Western partners coming together, trying to force Russia to agree to their terms, agree to uh, you know what the West wants, and the West wants obviously Russia to withdraw from uh, from Ukraine. 
uh, leave all these annexed areas, even including Crimea, give it all back to Ukraine. And we know Russia is not going to do that. OK, they're going to stay put where they're at. And right now, Ukraine does not have the ability to push Russia out of here, out of these uh, these annexed regions that have been taken from them. So because they cannot push Russia out, they're going to have to come to the negotiating table unless they continue to fight this war and continue losing more land, which they've already lost uh, more recently. I think two more towns have fallen here in the last couple days. So Ukraine can't continue to fight this forever. And it looks like what will happen is the longer that this war drags out, Ukraine will run out of more troops. They won't have enough troops to continue fighting this. Um, we, we do know that the West is going to continue funding this for at least another year. But aside from that, Russia has been making incremental gains on the eastern side of their country uh, for months now, okay, even years. And they might be small gains, but they are making gains, slowly chipping away at Ukraine a little bit at a time. So the longer this goes, uh, what I see here is that Ukraine is just going to continue to lose more land. So we're going to shift gears here a little bit and uh, talk about some other things here on X. So let's go ahead and, and show you some of this information too. So first I want to talk about, I've got two posts here regarding J.D. Vance. So again, he is Donald Trump's uh, Donald Trump's uh, vice president pick. So let's talk about him here a little bit. This is a post from a Sprinter family. One of the latest statements by Senator J.D. Vance, who today became a candidate for U.S. vice president in conjunction with Donald Trump about the conflict in Ukraine. In particular, on the issue of Ukraine, everyone with a brain knows that this will end in negotiations. Ukraine is functionally destroyed as a country. Our policy towards Ukraine is unsustainable. The average age of a soldier in their army is 43 years old. No one older than me can articulate what $61 billion can achieve. So we need to seek a negotiated end to the war. So as we can see here, J.D. Vance's stance on Ukraine is end the war as soon as possible. No more funding going to Ukraine. So this is how we know that very big possibility when this war or when uh, Donald Trump ends up coming back to the White House, if he does get reelected, uh, they will push for an end to this war very quickly. And most likely that will be due to uh, cutting off funding to Ukraine. So take a look at this. And you, and you oppose aid to Ukraine. Ex explain your position. Well, so first of all, Jake, I think it's possible to have separate debates. In fact, congressional Republicans tried to force an Israel alone aid package just a couple of weeks ago that Democrats blocked in the Senate. Uh, so we can have separate debates. I think that we need to have separate debates. But on the Ukraine question in particular, Everybody knows, everybody with a brain in their head, Jake, knows that this was always going to end in negotiation. The idea that Ukraine was going to throw Russia back to the 1991 borders was preposterous. Nobody actually believed it. So what we're saying to the president and really to the entire world is you need to articulate what the ambition is. What is $61 billion going to accomplish that $100 billion hasn't? We have to remember, Jake, Ukraine is functionally destroyed as a country. The average age of a soldier in the Ukrainian army right now is 43. That's tragic. That's older than me. I'm 39. If this thing goes on a little bit longer, the average age of a Ukrainian soldier is going to be older than you. And then a year later, it could be a Wolf Blitzer. That is a tragedy. What does it look like? I don't like this age graph. I'm, thing so, I'm sorry, Jake. But, I'm 54 but, 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 for those wondering. I, 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 yeah. We are getting to a place yeah. where we are going to be functionally on the hook to pay for Ukrainian pensioners, to rebuild the entire country. Right. We need to bring the killing to a stop. And that's what American leadership should be doing, not writing more blank checks to the war. Okay, so as we can see here, J.D. Vance is definitely uh, somebody who wants to support ending this war in Ukraine. And we know that Donald Trump has come out as well, publicly stating the same thing, that this war needs to end. It should have never begun. So, you know, he's he's got some valid points here. But uh, the main reason why I want to show you this is that they want to end this war as soon as possible, okay? Obviously, him and Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump ends up getting elected, expect this war to come to a close very quickly. And again, I think that's what the Kiev government is realizing right now, that if Donald Trump ends up getting back in the White House, they're going to have to find a way to peacefully end this war anyway, because at some point, the U.S. could just cut off funding to Ukraine as he's talking a lot about the $61 billion that went to Ukraine, that it's basically going to achieve noth uh, nothing here in this war. So this war is going to come to a close very soon. So take a look at this as well now. This is also from J.D. Vance, and this post is from AF Post. Okay, It says, J.D. Vance already pushing for war with Iran after being announced as Trump's VP. A lot of people recognize that we need to do something with Iran but not these weak little bombing runs. If you're going to punch the Iranians, you punch them hard. Okay, so this was uh, this was J.D. Vance in an interview on Fox News as well. And 
him coming out publicly stating that they need to start going after Iran now. So that's why I was mentioning earlier is maybe the reason, the whole reason why they want to close this war with Ukraine is that they're going to have to open up a whole new front with Israel going after Iran now. That's definitely based on what I've been reporting. That's what it looks like the way that things are going. And I just said this maybe a couple weeks ago that this war in Ukraine was going to come to a close and then the new war uh, between you know Ukraine and Russia and all that, that that wasn't going to be the new war anymore. The new war was actually going to be with Iran. So take a look at what he has to say here and then we'll talk about it after. A lot of people recognize that we need to do something with Iran, but not these weak little bombing runs. If you're going to punch the Iranians, you punch them hard and that's what he did when he took out Soleimani. By the way, that action, people said that it would lead to broader war. It actually brought peace. It actually checked the Iranians and slowed them down a little bit. But let me just say something about this, this Iran issue, because maybe the most important diplomatic breakthrough of the Trump administration was the Abraham Accords. If you want to check Iran, the way to do it is to, one, withdraw their oil money, which, of course, Joe Biden's been bad about. But you've also got to enable the Israelis and the Sunni Arab states to work together and actually provide a counterbalance to Iran. Joe Biden has done nothing. You have the infrastructure there, sitting there, to weaken Iran, to strengthen than our ally Israel. Joe Biden's done nothing with it. Donald Trump would reinvigorate it. I think one of, a lot of people recognize that we need to do. Okay, so in this video, you can see here too that he's clearly talking about uh, these bombing runs that the United States did uh, just not too long ago, within like the last six months, started bombing Iran whenever uh, U.S. bases were coming under attack in the Middle East. I, I covered all of that information. Um, but, you know, he's, he's coming out saying that they need to deal with Iran, that uh, we know that right now, Israel is potentially going to go to war with Hezbollah at any moment, okay? I just did a report yesterday that showed that information, that uh, the Israeli military chiefs are preparing for war right now with Israel, and they have been for months now, so that could break out at any moment. And we know that Iran could get dragged into that conflict as well. They've come out publicly stating that they would back Hezbollah, so that's a very big possibility, right? So it definitely seems like the United States may be shifting away from this war in Ukraine because he's come out... Um, J.D. Vance has stated that they, they got to end this, this war in Ukraine, pull to negotiations, leave Ukraine alone. And then now he's talking about going after Iran. So that's why I wanted to show you that information. So is that going to be the next war to break out? Is that going to be the next world uh, or like a regional war, major war that's going to break out? It's very possible that it could be Iran. So uh, that's why I wanted you to see that. Finally, I got a couple of things that I want to show you here too. Just some uh, updates regarding Russia and Ukraine. I found this report here, this is from KVIST, KVIST-P, and it says Russia's winning T-54 from the late 1950s. So we've got some 1950s tanks that are heading towards the front line, it looks like. They're at least on these uh, these trains being transferred. And take a look at all these old tanks that are being uh, sent towards the front line that haven't been used in, you know, in decades. So take a look. Отожди от края платформы. У тебя какой-то телефон чуть-чуть слон. Половина экрана. So it's very interesting to see that Russia is using all these old tanks, and it definitely it could it could for sure be indicative that uh, Russia is running out of equipment to send to the front line. We know that they've lost a lot of their tanks. Um, it's being reported all the time that um, you, they lose hundreds and hundreds of tanks all the time. So it looks like they're having to dip into their old storages and pull out these old tanks that haven't been used in years and, you know, send them to the front line. So this may be a, a show of like desperation here of like last minute desperation to push into Ukraine. Um, but, you know, we, we know from Viktor Orban, the Hungarian prime minister, he came out reporting recently that uh, that this war in Ukraine is going to get uh, much more brutal than it ever has been in the past. So I don't know. This to me looks like desperation is what it looks like. So you let me know what you think down below. But I've got a couple other things I want to show you here. I also have another report from Military News. Russia recently lost its 100th T-90M breakthrough tank, which Putin considers the best tank. This was reported by the resource of Ozen T researchers of combat operations orcs. So I don't think there's any uh, sound to this, but we'll go ahead and play it and talk about it. But this apparently is one of uh, Russia's best tanks that they have. And look at this thing get destroyed. I don't know what it got hit by, but something hit it really hard and completely blew up in flames. And uh, from what we understand, uh, Russia's, Russia's lost at least like 100 of these already. 
okay, that have been destroyed. So this is supposed to be like a major breakthrough tank and a new technology, uh, a good quality tank for them, and uh, they don't even seem to be holding up in this war too. So just wanted to show you that. That was some new uh, footage that came out here on X. And finally, one last thing I want to share with you from Nexta. Russia and Ukraine have exchanged POWs on a 95 for 95 basis. The Russian Defense Ministry has claimed Zelensky published photos of those who returned from captivity. The exchange was mediated by the UAE. So we got some photos here of some of these Ukrainian uh, POWs that were uh, released and sent back to Ukraine. So this is always good to see, you know, on both sides, even in Russia. I'm happy to hear that they were able to exchange uh, these gentlemen for Russia as well. And, uh, you know, I, I really do hope this war does come to an end. Um, obviously, these people don't deserve to be suffering anymore, and they're fighting over a war that should have never been fought to begin with. But at the same time, Russia invaded Ukraine. So here's just some more photos for you. And one last photo here. So not, something that I noticed here, too, is a lot of these men that come back from these uh, from these camps, right, uh, that are being held as POWs in um, in Russia, if you notice, they're very skinny, okay? They look malnourished, and um, they were not well taken care of. If anything, they may have been tortured while they were there. So it's very sad to see this, too. This is the second time um, that I want to say I saw POWs getting returned to Ukraine in the last maybe couple months. There was another ex uh, prisoner exchange that happened, I want to say back in May, possibly. And uh, we saw the same thing, okay? These soldiers come back, and they're just they're so skinny, okay? They look like they're barely fed. Um, they're not taken care of at all. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share this with you and get that out there, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, let you know what's going on over here with Ukraine, that it looks like they are developing a plan to end this war through negotiations right now with Russia. So we'll have to see how this plays out here over the next few months, but definitely by November, we should have a good idea of how this war is going to come to an end. I'm sure Vladimir Zelensky will be releasing some information on his peace plans as well. Because we already know what Russia wants, that they want to maintain the land that they've taken already, and they don't want Ukraine to join NATO. So that one's going to be a big hurdle. I'm very curious to see uh, how Ukraine will represent themselves in negotiations when it comes to them wanting to join NATO. I mean, will they come out and say, no, we just won't join NATO, we'll just stay neutral? I don't know. But at this point, it, I can't see why Ukraine would not want the protection of NATO, considering that they've been working with NATO all this time. And, you know, would they want to be attacked again? OK, this could be a very uh, big advantage for NATO to bring them on. And we know that Jen Stoltenberg and many members of NATO have come out and stated that uh, Ukraine will join NATO at some point. So share your thoughts, concerns and opinions down in the comment section. That's going to be it for this update. If you got something out of this, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that. I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless, and we'll see you in the next one.